Welcome everyone to another edition of our Faith Moments with Dina Marie, and it is a joy and a pleasure to be with you today. In fact, as we record this, it's a beautiful feast day in the church. It's the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, which actually follows the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross. So here in the month of September, as we are in a transition time of summer to fall and in the in the in the west coast right now we're we're facing fires and smoke and a lot of devastation where do we go we go to the cross what what gives us what gives us the the energy and and the faith it is in the cross the cross of jesus christ and and where do we go for a model of faith we go to our lady at the foot of the cross her faith her trust, her humility, that God has a plan in all things and to trust in God's providence. So today I want to focus upon the power of the cross, the power of the Eucharist, actually, um, which we are revealed in the cross. His love for us is in the love of the food of Jesus Christ that he gives us. And so I've asked one of our great friends in the Archdiocese of Portland, Father John Boyle, to join us. He is over in Cottage Grove, just about 25 miles south of Eugene on I-5, and that's Our Lady of Perpetual Help Parish, a beautiful parish. I've had the fortunate opportunity to be there and to speak and to share about our faith. So Father John, it's great to have you joining us by Zoom, and thanks for being with me today. My very pl great pleasure, and uh, to, as we're recording, as you say, it is the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, so we yes. greet each other under her protection today as well. Absolutely. Well, the power of the Eucharist, and I know for our Rosary Bowl community, there's two pillars that we always try to bring to our, our event and in our prayers, and it's Mary and the Eucharist. And so today I really wanted to focus on the power of the Eucharist. And I think in these last few months, so many of us around the globe have had so many distractions that maybe we've lost sight of the true presence of Christ, how to prepare ourselves for Holy Communion, um, when so many of us for a while have not been able to go to church. But now the churches are reopened. There's this, this new fresh air coming into the churches. But let's start maybe looking back at our history of just you know, the early Christian church, how did they see Jesus in the Eucharist and their gatherings together? You know, what, what do we have to look to in terms of an example of, of the true importance that we should surround ourselves with the table, the, the table of plenty, the table of Christ, providing his true body and blood for us to lead us to eternal life? Well, we can look no further than the Acts of the Apostles to see what the early church did, the apostles did, they gathered together uh, for the breaking of the bread. Um, and that would have been the first celebration of the Eucharist, uh, where they fulfilled the Lord's command to do this in memory of me. We also know that the early church gathered with Mary uh, in prayer. And um, so we can speculate and think about how Our Lady would have been with the early apostle, with the apostles before uh, her um, assumption. You know, around the Feast of the Assumption, I was thinking very much and reading a little bit about, you know, what was Our Lady doing, uh, um, you know, in that time uh, between her son's ascension and her own assumption. And uh, she would have been with the apostles. This is what the, uh, the experts, the fathers, the doctors of the church tell us. She would have been with the apostles and the early uh, disciples there, um, telling them about her son. Uh, and explaining, uh, maybe helping them to understand the mysteries of, of the faith, because she obviously was the woman of faith. Uh, she had that, the great privilege of being with her son throughout all what we would call formative years. But one wonders who was forming whom you know, <laughs> in that relationship. Obviously, humanly, um, it went both ways. But uh, so, you know, you could imagine her being present at those early celebrations of the Eucharist. And, um, you know, uh, St. John Paul II uh, mentioned this, you know, in his letter um, on the Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary and in his encyclical on the Eucharist, Ecclesia de Eucharistia, said how we should, you know, go to the, go to the school of Mary. So we can, we can imagine how Mary would have been participating in the Eucharist, how how would she have received Holy Communion? You know, it would have been a, an amazing thing. Uh, of course, you know, the, 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 the liturgy of the church developed over the early centuries, but very quickly it settled into, you know, the Mass uh, as we, um, 
as, as, as sort of we know it, you know, the, the formal liturgical celebrations. Sometimes people say, you oh, know, we should just go back to those early days when it was all so informal. Well, we don't know that it was. Uh, it was structured. And of course, when the persecution of the church ended, uh, the church came out and established itself in churches, basilicas, which were former Roman buildings. Um, and uh, it took on very quickly, you know, the formal um, um, structure that we, we know now. So great reverence. And if you think that the memory of our Lord would have been recent uh, at that time, uh, how, how they would have recalled that coming into coming to mass and coming to his presence in the blessed sacrament was making presence something that was still relatively recent mm -hmm. history. Uh, they would have known people who knew our Lord or who were the, the grandchildren of people who knew our Lord, you know, um, just would have been a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience, I think. Mm -hmm. And that importance, Father John, of the coming together of the community, I mean, we need to be in community and Christ calls us to be in, in, in union with one another. So there had to have been, and there still is today. And we need to continue to build, I think this sense of, we need to come together to yes. share in worship. Yes, we pray in our homes, we pray with our families in quiet, but there is such a value and an internal value, I think, to pray along with the angels and the saints in the holy celebration of the mass. Yes. Well, all the sacraments are established precisely for that um, um, uh, building up of the people of God uh, and the body of the church. Um, and uh, the, the sacraments show us that we need one another. At the very least, one needs a priest <laughs> to administer the sacraments. You know, so the priest is a mediator um, of, of, of grace uh, uh, in that sense. So, Yes, we have our, as it were, direct line with God and with our Lord in prayer, and he dwells in the soul in grace. So we need to turn no further than, than into our hearts to find our Lord if, if we're in the state of grace and the Holy Spirit dwelling there. Yet, on the other hand, we don't have a direct line. <laughs> you know, it, it's all mediated through the church, uh, and the church is a body uh, which is structured hierarchically. Um, and uh, the sacraments are a means uh, which are in keeping with our natures bodily, uh, our senses, um, and they are means established by Jesus Christ himself, by which grace is communicated to the soul. So it's uh, absolutely essential that we come together, you, you know, for, for the sacraments. We, you cannot sa celebrate a sacrament on your own. I mean, you know, a sacrament is always celebrated with with the church, uh, even if there's just one person present, the whole church is present there. You know, even if you had the privilege of reserving Holy Communion in your, in your home, and were able to receive it on your own, which would be a privilege granted rarely, you still wouldn't have that blessed sacrament were it not for the church, were it not for mm -hmm. the priests consecrating it. So we're interdependent, and um, and of course the Mass supremely is when we. Uh, we come together around the the altar to uh, to make presents it were uh, the, uh, the representation of the holy sacrifice of the cross offered once and for all but by being present at the at the altar we are made present at that mystery of the cross and it's interesting isn't it that the church places an obligation upon us to be a Mass on Sundays and Holy Days of Obligation. Now, some people say, well, I, what, you know, I shouldn't go out of obligation. Well, no, you should go because you want to. <laughs> but, you know, we, there are things that Mother, Holy Mother Church imposes on us because she knows what is good for us. And she knows also that maybe if we, if we, if we didn't have that obligation, we might make excuses for ourselves. So mm -hmm. there's the obligation to be present at the celebration of the Holy Mass, the Holy Eucharist. There is not an obligation to receive communion. Mm -hmm. The only obligation we have to receive communion is once a year. And, th and that at Easter or thereabouts. Right. Right? But the obligation is to be mm -hmm. at Mass. 
Mm-hmm. And there, there are all kinds of reasons, and we can go on to this maybe, but there are all kinds of reasons why one may or may not receive Holy Communion. But we are obliged uh, to, to be at Mass. This could apply in, the, in this current time, you know, where, um, you know, we have the, the COVID restrictions and, um, you know, some people may feel, well, you know, I, I could go to church, but I'm a, a bit, I'm a bit concerned about close contact with the priest and as, especially as, as he's going from one person to another. Well, if you're under that state of subjective fear, which, you know, uh, I can't do anything about that. That's how you are, you know. You should still come to Mass. Mm-hmm. Even, though you, even though you, because of your subjective state, find that you cannot receive Holy Communion. We need to be get there at Mass. Mm-hmm. And you're right, we need to gather as the community. Uh, that, that's so true. But we need it also individually. I need to be there at Mass, to be there where the sacrifice which was offered once and for all for my sins is made present and where Christ offers himself once again uh, in, under, certain, in a, under the sacramental forms uh, to, to his Father. So we need to be there uh, yeah. because by being at Mass we are with Mary and John and the holy women at the foot at the uh, at the foot of the cross. Absolutely, and Father John, it just makes me think about when Jesus called his disciples. You know, come follow me. It's come and live my way of life. And so, in coming to mass and desiring to be in community, we are living as Christ has called us to be. Not in the world. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. And where do we spend our time? What's important and, and of value to me and my family and my priorities? And if it's not number one to be in the church, to because that fuels everything that I do as a husband, as a wife, as a parent, as a grandparent, as a business owner, as a minister, whatever vocation we're called to, it's completely fed by our spiritual life in Christ, that that fuels everything that we do to be successful in the world, to provide for the needs of my family, my community. Um, So that is so critical to being in that space, in that time, because as you said, we're at the altar. We are, we're touching heaven in a way when we're, we're, we're hearing the prayers, when we're participating in the liturgy. It's not just in Portland, Oregon, or in Cottage Grove, there's something supernatural that we can understand in what happens at that liturgy of the Holy Eucharist. Yes, well, in fact, you know, being at every Mass is, um, it calls us to continuing conversion. It calls us to, uh, you know, to, to make a further step forward uh, in this lifetime process of, of um, transformation. Of becoming more and more like Christ in our lives. I mean, we begin the Mass, well actually, and you know, this is very important what you said about, you know, gathering at home and then gathering in the church. One leads to the other. You know, really, we should begin our Mass well before we arrive at Mass. We need to begin our Mass at home. We need to begin our Mass by preparing ourselves for uh, the, the great event that is going to be unfolding before us uh, in the church. So saying prayers in preparation for Mass, which, which and those traditional prayers are full of rich doctrine, you know, uh, on, on the Mass. Then when we go to Mass itself, of course, um, the, we, the first thing we do after the greeting is that we we confess the fact that we are sinners. Um, we confess, first of all, to Almighty God. And, um, and of course, all the angels, Mary and all the angels and saints are present as we confess to one another as well. So we confess to the communion of saints and we ask the saints to pray for us. We ask one another to, to pray for us. 
So there you are, you see an expression of the communion of saints or the body of the, the, the faithful, the community, if you want to call it that, but it really the communion of saints is what it's about. We're gathered together, they're, they're praying for one another, uh, that Almighty God will have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. You know? and, that we, and that's where we begin. Mm -hmm. And from then on, you know, it's, it's offering glory to God. Uh, it's uniting ourselves with the prayers that are said in our mass, uh, and the chances are, you know, in most other churches of the Latin rite, if we're a Latin rite Catholic, if you're, a, I know many of people in our archdiocese are of Eastern churches, but whatever ritual church they belong to, in that ritual church throughout the world, the same prayers will be offered. So there's a great unity of the faithful throughout the world as well, and all this prayer is being offered to God. And uh, yes, you could take your missal, the prayer book, and say those prayers on your own at home. But, but that's not the same as them being mediated through the priest who offers them in the people's name uh, to God, our Heavenly Father. And we, we join in that. And then we listen to the scripture readings, which are always a call to conversion and the transformation of life. And hopefully the homily will lead us in that, will, will help us in that conversion of life as well. It'll be encouraging, hopefully, um, especially in times like this where we need it, but it'll be challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, and we should leave mass saying, hmm, got something to work on there, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whereas if you're on your own, you, uh, you know, you may not, um, you, you can pick a book, but the, the thing about going to mass is you never know what the homily is going to be about. Mm -hmm. So that there's, an op there's an openness there to, and hopefully the priest has prayed and what is coming through him is hopefully not inspired in the way that the scripture is inspired, but some, hopefully there'll be something there for me, for you. And then of course, the, with, the, with the offering, you know, the bread and wine that's offered, we offer ourselves so that we might be transformed like that bread and wine into Christ, but also that we might be a pure offering because nothing, um, nothing impure, it can be offered to God. And that means we hopefully have gone to Mass preparing ourselves by good confession. Mm -hmm. You know, part of that conversion, we've prepared with a confession. And the two generally go together for a healthy spiritual life. Frequent reception of the Eucharist goes along with frequent uh, confession. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're all, we, we are then offered, you know, Christ offers himself, but we're united with that offering. All our activities, as you mentioned, the, the vocations that we have, whether it's mm -hmm. husband, wife, mother, father, teacher, doctor, banker, lawyer, politician, uh, whatever it is, um, student, all our work is offered on that pattern with the bread transformed into something worthy of the Father, which is Christ himself. You know? uh, and then uh, uh, there is that communion with him then, you know, in Holy Communion, sacramental, if we uh, consider that we are in a state of grace and properly prepared uh, for Holy Communion. And hopefully that reception of Holy Communion leads to a further transformation in that that Holy Communion is not transformed into us. We are transformed into what we receive, unlike normal food, you know, which just disappears into us, you know, with Holy Communion. The idea is that we are transformed into what we receive, the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole thing there that you know only can only be accomplished by actually being present at Mass. And even if one is unable to receive communion, either because one is in an irregular or marital situation or for whatever reason one is conscious of grave sin and has not been able to go to confession or one is afraid of catching a virus, you know, mm -hmm. well there's still all those other graces available to you when you're at mass. Um, I think this is just an important invitation for us, Father John, to invite people to really, and, and I'm a convert to the Catholic church and it was right. the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. I grew up in a Christian tradition and we went to um, communion, but it wasn't the true presence of Christ in that wafer and in that grape juice. And when I started to hear the teachings of the church, 
through the Catholic lens, I went, this is what I was missing. This is what didn't feel like it was complete. And I didn't know how to describe it. I didn't know about the Eucharist and the presence of Christ until I started to take those steps through the RCA process and through some yeah. brothers and sisters kind of walking with me. And, and this yeah. is the time of the year where many men and women are starting to go through that journey of looking at, is there something more that I desire? Is there something about the truth that, that I want to find in Jesus Christ? And yes. it's going to be his whole body revealed in the Holy Eucharist. So I hope people will, will come back. And, and I know that there are still these opportunities um, that there, there may be this hesitation, but go into our father's arms. I mean, this is what I think when we, when we're close to the tabernacle, right? Father, well, even if we're oh, sitting no. outside of the parking lot of a church, um, yeah. that, that Jesus uh, is there. Yeah. I would really encourage people. I mean, you know, I, one can't speak for, you know, that, as I say, that subjective state that people find themselves in and, and, you know, the fear that is there. And we've all got our opinions on COVID, <laughs> um, but I, I, I would put an uh, appeal to people to please come back, you know, uh, come back to Mass. Um, uh, I don't know of anyone who's got sick because of coming to Mass. I personally don't know. But, you know, I, uh, and I will just speak for myself um, and uh, with, total, with full respect for how other people feel. Um, but when you consider what the Mass is, when you consider what the Holy Eucharist is, the Mass being the holy sacrifice of the cross, right? I mean, everybody fled apart from Mary and John and the Holy One. And we probably all said, well, if I was there, I would have stuck up for Christ. I'd have been there. No, you wouldn't. You would have fled. But now you have the opportunity to be there. Thanks to this beautiful divine institution of the Holy Eucharist by our Lord. Now you have the opportunity of being there. What would you give up for that opportunity of being there? You know, of being at the foot of the cross with Mary and John and the Holy Women. Of being there with the centurion, you know, when the, when the lance was pierced. It was that beautiful image in the Passion mm -hmm. of the Christ when... The lance pierces Christ's side and blood and water flows out upon the centurion. I mean, he was baptized at that moment, <laughs> you could say. Mm -hmm. The blood, you know, that we want to be poured out all over the world was poured out upon him. And what did he say? Truly, this was the son of God. You know, what, what wouldn't you do to be there? Yeah, we have this opportunity every day, but at least every Sunday to be there. And then the possibility of receiving our Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity, you know, sacramentally. If you weigh that up, okay, what the Eucharist is with the 0 .00 something chance of catching something or even dying. I mean, I, I tell others, you know, my mother, God rest her soul, would, would, would have given me a split second to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't have given me long, you know. And you think of the, um, the martyrs and the saints. There's yeah. this beautiful book, you know, produced by the um, Office of Divine Worship. Uh, and I found this reflection of St. Damien of Molokai. Mm -hmm. Can I read it? Yes, please. You know, we know what he gave up and how much he loved he served the poor, you see, and this ties in with Pope Benedict XVI's uh, teaching on the Eucharist's sacramentum caritatis, the sacrament of love, of charity. You know, when we're filled with uh, a yearning for the Eucharist, it strengthens us for the works of charity, the works of mercy. This is what St. Damien of Molokai said. The blessed sacrament is indeed the stimulus for us all. For me, as it should be for you, to forsake all worldly ambitions. Without the constant presence of our divine master upon the altar in my poor chapels, I never could have persevered casting my lot with the lepers of Molokai. The foreseen consequence of which begins now to appear on my skin. 
and is felt throughout the body because leprosy was taking a hold of him. Holy Communion being the daily bread of a priest, I feel myself happy, well pleased, and resigned in the rather exceptional circumstances in which it has pleased divine providence to put me. Mm. I mean, to me, that just speaks volumes, you know, about, I mean, the Eucharist is worth giving everything for, giving everything for. And uh, thanks be to God, you know, I have parishioners of great faith and some of the older ones, you know, those ones who were told, oh, you shouldn't come, you know, because you're, uh, they, nothing's going to stop me <laughs> <That's right. laughs> receiving the Eucharist. Amen. And if I die, what, what better way to die? You know? <laughs> so to me, that's authentic Christian mm -hmm. faith. And, you know, as much as we care about people's physical welfare, the church's first concern is your spiritual welfare yes. and your eternal salvation. Mm -hmm. And last time I checked, our Lord instituted the sacraments because we need them. Mm -hmm. We need them. And it, it, it uh, I, you know, I, I, I worry about people who have been six months, seven months now without being to Mass, when they could otherwise come, you know. So again, I'm not, you know, each one has to make up their own mind mm -hmm. in this when, when it's safe to do so. But have you gotten used to alternative ways of somehow doing church as the phrase is now, you know. Mm -hmm. And Cardinal Sara of the Congregation of the Divine Worship has, has just issued a letter to the bishops reminding them that the faithful must come back to Mass. That, you know, um, live streaming and watching on television is not nothing like the same. And I think there's, there's a deacon of our archdiocese, so I heard on a, on a Mater Day radio uh, trailer recently, said, you know, next time someone says... Um, I'm really hungry. I could do with a, you know, I could do with a McDonald's. Uh, I'll just, I'll just show them a video of, uh, right. of, of McDonald's. <laughs> That's you know. right. Uh, doesn't quite do, doesn't do it, you know. Doesn't, it doesn't work. work. Doesn't work unless you're unable to because of sickness or you've got to look after someone who's sick or some mm -hmm. other emergency. Yeah. We, we need to be there. We want people to come home. We yeah. want people to come home, and so we continue to pray for that heart to go where you know the Lord is and the Lord is in the presence of the Holy Eucharist. And so come to church and be safe, but, but we need our souls to be fed at this time and at all times. So we pray that our lady will guide us to that special home. And that is the home of the altar, the altar of Christ. Father John Boyle again with us from Our Lady of Perpetual Help, which, you know, if you have a special devotion to Our Lady of Perpetual Help, boy, now is the time to continue to ask for her intercession. I want to thank you, Father. And we're going to have to continue to have these discussions, I think, hmm. so important as we move into so, the yeah. fall season. And, and so many people are wanting to go back to, re, to learning more about their faith. And yes. so many people hungry for coming into the church in this time of preparation that we can continue to pray and to walk with people in their faith. Would you help us with a, with a blessing and to close us in prayer, please? Well, I'm going to bring in St. Joseph. Yes. And um, there is a prayer after Mass, sorry, prayer um, before Mass uh, um, of St. Joseph, um, and uh, which a priest can say. Actually, I'm going to say the one after Mass, okay? Uh, which anyone can say, really, okay? So just join in this. Just imagine you've received our Lord in, in Holy Communion and you, you make this prayer to him. Saint Joseph, Father and Guardian of Virgins, to whose faithful keeping Christ Jesus' innocence itself and Mary, the Virgin of Virgins, were entrusted, I pray and beseech you by that twofold and most precious charge by Jesus and Mary to save me from all uncleanness to keep my mind untainted, my heart pure, and my body chaste, and to help me always to serve Jesus and Mary in perfect chastity. Amen. Amen. So shall I Amen. give a blessing? Yes, please. Amen. Okay. Uh, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon 
us all, upon all uh, who listen to this and watch this and, and remain with us all forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Thank you Dina Marie. Thank you, Father John. God bless and you. I hope the rosary bowl goes really well. I'll be, we'll be uh, united with that here in the parish. Wonderful. We're glad to hear that. And we'll pray for you. Continue to pray for us. And thank you for all of you tuning into our faith moments today. May you have a blessed day.